So real quick, before we get into the video, right, I got to ask y'all a question, man, because I'm starting to notice this within myself, right? Like some mornings I wake up and I'm like, is today the day? Is today the day that I walk outside my front door and I look up and I see this huge spaceship just sitting there positioned and I'm like, today's the day. And it's nothing we could do about it. Do you, anybody else or am I just this stuff getting to me? I, I don't know, man. I just find myself thinking like, is today the day? Or it could be, is today the day we meet in them? Today is the day they make themselves known. Who knows? Until then, we're going to keep paying attention to what's going on. And with that being said, the next video is NASA just detected something massive that keeps showing up in our solar system today. All right, so if you knew, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, join the family, and let's check this out. And make sure you hit that like button for more content. Here we go. In recent years, there have been reports of snake-shaped objects being spotted near the International Space Station. These sightings have sparked curiosity and debate among both scientists and the public, as people try to make sense of these strange and mysterious objects. The sightings of snake-shaped objects were first reported by astronauts on board the International Space Station. They described seeing long, sinuous objects moving through space, resembling giant snakes, and these objects seemed to be metallic and were reported to move with a strange and unsettling grace. While some skeptics have dismissed these sightings as nothing more than space debris or optical illusions, others have taken them more seriously. The snake-like shape of these objects is highly unusual, and their movements seem to defy explanation. There are a number of theories about what these snake-shaped objects could be. Some suggest that they are secret military craft designed for espionage or surveillance missions. Others speculate that they are advanced aircrafts or life, perhaps sent to Earth to observe or even communicate with humans. I wouldn't rule that out either. Wouldn't that be some some sneaky mess? Like, <laughs> we thinking we seeing something we've never seen before, but it's some type of spy spacecraft or something like that. Like, you don't, it's to the point we don't know what to believe or who to trust. One of the most intriguing theories about these objects is that they are living beings rather than machines or advanced crafts. Some scientists have suggested that the objects could be organic in nature, perhaps some form of space-dwelling serpent or other creature. While this theory may seem far-fetched, there is evidence to suggest that life can exist in the vacuum of space. Microbes and other forms of extremophile life have been found on the exterior of the ISS, and scientists have speculated that life could exist on other celestial bodies as well. Despite the fascination surrounding these sightings, the truth behind the objects remains elusive. Some experts believe that they may simply be a natural phenomenon caused by the interaction of solar winds and the Earth's magnetic field. I'm intrigued yet scared at the same time. Because <laughs> imagine if that is a snake in space, a, a space snake or whatever we want to call it, right? How is it living? What is its capabilities? I just watched a video uh, the other day with my kids and my family about um, Titanoboa, right? And and the just the havoc it could wreak. What would we think the capabilities of this snake would be? Others believe that the sightings may be the result of technological glitches or anomalies rather than actual physical objects in space. Whatever the case may be, the snake-shaped objects remain a tantalizing mystery, and one that will likely continue to captivate the public's imagination for years to come. Mysterious giant bubbles discovered at the center of the Milky Way. There are many things that could be lurking unseen at the center of our Milky Way, so researchers are always prepared for new discoveries, but what they did not expect to find were mysterious bubbles. However, these were not the soap bubbles that children blow on Earth. This was a pair of enormous radio-emitting bubble-like structures that have been hiding in plain view right at the center of our galaxy. 
The two orbs are stacked on top of each other in such a way that they form a massive structure vaguely resembling an hourglass hanging at the heart of the Milky Way. In fact, they are so huge that they far surpass all other structures in the region, with each one measuring hundreds of light years in diameter. But what are they? And how could such large objects have been hiding in plain sight for all this time? Researchers were able to detect the strange bubbles at long last due to the radio waves they are emitting, which were picked up by a team using the South African Radio Astronomy Observatory Meerkat Telescope, which is the largest science project in Africa. The bubbles had previously been hidden due to the overpowering nature of the radio emissions that already come from the centre of the galaxy, but the powerful capabilities of the Meerkat allowed researchers to filter through the dense radio dust in order to get a much clearer image of what can be found at the centre of the Milky Way. They believe that such strange structures may be several million years old and might have appeared as the result of a powerful energetic burst occurring in the vicinity of the supermassive black hole that rests at the centre of the Milky Way. Ian Hayward, lead author of the study, described these strange findings stating the center of our galaxy is relatively calm when compared to other galaxies with very active central black holes. Even so, the Milky Way's central black hole can from time to time become uncharacteristically active. Flaring I was about to say, don't we have multiple black holes at the center of our Milky Way and that and they're calm? I guess is that okay, I guess. Up as it periodically devours massive clumps of dust and gas. It's possible that one such feeding frenzy triggered powerful outbursts that inflated this previously unseen feature. This area around the Milky Way's centre has always been one of the most mysterious aspects of our galaxy due to the unusual amount of activity that occurs there, fueled by the black hole that drives many energetic processes right. within this region of the galaxy. Discovering elements of what lies within this strange, uncharted space can help researchers as they begin to pass through what exactly occurs at this point of the Milky Way. Although there are not many immediately forthcoming answers confirming how two such strange, enormous radio-emitting bubbles appeared, simply discovering their presence is enough to give researchers plenty of information to add to the growing body of theories surrounding the behaviours at the centre of our galaxy. Okay. An invisible black hole has been found just outside the Milky Way galaxy. For the first time ever, a black hole has been detected outside of the borders of the Milky Way galaxy. It's a small inactive black hole that seems to have been hiding in plain sight. It's located in a satellite galaxy called the Large Magellanic Cloud, which is a close neighbour of the Milky Way. Part of what makes this black hole discovery a big deal is that it could help scientists discover more black holes like it as well as give a better understanding of how black holes are formed. Black holes are definitely deceptive beings. Their enormous density creates an extreme gravitational field that stops even light from gaining enough velocity to escape. They are hidden by the darkness with no light shining that we can detect. They deviate from this darkness when they are actively consuming space material. The process is quite chaotic and causes X-ray radiation to form around the margins of the black hole. When black holes, but it still looks like a portal to me, a portal to another dimension. Now, will we ever find out if it's a portal? No, because nothing that goes in it comes out or comes out alive or is you know what I mean. We still, and, and like we could send a bunch of cameras or spacecraft and there were cameras on it. No, it's gonna demolish it. So it's like we'll never really know are inactive, they are pretty much invisible, and the way they are best detected in this phase is the intense amount of gravity, but only if you know how to search. When a stellar mass black hole, which is a black hole produced by the gravitational collapse of a star, is in a binary system with another star, the movement of the orbit of its partner moving around what looks like empty space is a possible indication of a black hole being present. That being said, not all empty spaces are black holes. This can make it tricky for scientists to call their findings definite. This particular team of researchers was composed of astronomer Thomas Schenner of Amsterdam University in the Netherlands, Karim Albadri of the Harvard and Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, 
and Julia Bodensteiner of the European Southern Observatory. They have been meticulously debunking black hole discovery claims because the evidence has to be undisputable. For the last two years, this careful team has zeroed in their focus on the Tarantula Nebula in the large Magellanic Cloud. This nebula is known for being a star nursery. Young, massive stars call it home. Around 1,000 of these baby stars were studied to see if the scientists could observe a wobble that would indicate a binary orbit. The binary that helped discover the black hole is believed to be one of many that can be researched to discover the patterns of black holes. Mysterious radio bursts tacked to the arms of distant spiral galaxies. Fast radio bursts are one of the many elements of the infinite and mysterious expanse of space that scientists have spent decades trying to understand. These bursts are rapid and brief radio pulses that are emitted by a mysterious source and release enormous amounts of energy in a few milliseconds. In fact, some astronomers estimate that most fast radio bursts produce as much energy in a single millisecond as the Sun produces in three days. However, one really? of the reasons that they have remained so mysterious is because they are incredibly hard to track down. Although they emit an enormous amount of energy initially, the bright flares that they produce rapidly fade away and are barely visible by the time that they reach Earth. But, luckily for researchers, the Hubble Space Telescope may have just provided information that will allow scientists to begin to solve the mystery of what exactly fast radio bursts are. Recently, the telescope was able to locate the origins of five fast radio bursts, which were revealed to have been generated within the spiral arms of five distant galaxies. This allowed researchers to discard older theories that have proposed fast radio bursts might originate from star explosions or collisions between old neutron stars, which typically occur much further from galaxy arms. They were also able to throw out a third theory suggesting that fast radio bursts originated from dwarf galaxies, as the galactic infrastructure captured by the Hubble Space Telescope was not consistent with this theory. Rather, this location supports a much newer theory that suggests fast radio bursts could be produced by magnetars, an interesting type of neutron star. Magnetars produce an intense magnetic field, which is what could be generating these fast radio bursts that have puzzled scientists for so long. The new Hubble telescope images allowed astronomers to analyze characteristics of the galaxies that were producing the fast radio bursts in order to better understand the properties of the stars that were associated with this strange phenomenon. They combined ultraviolet and near-infrared light in order to gain an understanding of the mass of the galaxies, as well as the respective ages of the stars involved. And although this new information provides more support for the magnetar theory, much more research is still needed to definitively say once and for all how fast radio bursts are generated. However, these new images give us much more contextual information about what is happening at the source of these bursts, as well as the composition of the galaxies that are generating them. Alexandra Mannings, lead author of the study detailing these exciting new findings, said in a statement that the imaging allows us to get a better idea of the overall host galaxy properties, such as its mass and star formation rate, as well as probe what's happening right at the FRB. And, as the technology used to obtain these Hubble Space Telescope images has given rise to many new discoveries about the cosmos around us, astronomers hope that it will only be a matter of time before they can definitively determine what causes fast radio bursts once and for all. Why do I feel like it's only a matter of time? Really means it's going to be a long matter of time. <laughs> you know what I mean? When it comes to this stuff. That's one thing I'm starting to learn or have been learning about dealing with space in the cosmos. Like time, shh, that could be 10, 15 years. Powerful jets found shooting from an incredibly magnetic neutron star. One of the most interesting things about space is that most of the knowledge that we have are simply theories and hypotheses based on the data that we have gathered so far. This means that every now and then, scientists and astronomers are forced to reconsider previously held knowledge and ideas in the face of contradictory new evidence. In one such instance, 
researchers were dumbfounded when they observed something the likes of which had never been seen before. A massive beam, moving almost as fast as the speed of light, was seen shooting out from an extremely powerful neutron star, boasting an incredibly strong magnetic field that is over 10 trillion times stronger than our suns. Neutron stars are an interesting phenomenon, and are what is left over when a massive star runs out of fuel. As the star begins to collapse, their core creates a neutron, which essentially stops the final stages of the collapse, which would eventually lead to the creation of a black hole and leaves behind a neutron star instead. These stars boast an incredibly large density, resulting in powerful gravitational pulls almost as strong as black holes. So, now, the thing about that that makes me nervous is you know scientists are somewhere in a lab trying to recreate all of this type of stuff, right? And, and maybe I'm so far from it in my thought process, but I'm thinking what if they do recreate a star some kind of way in a laboratory and they recreate it to the point to where it 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 collapses down or explodes or burst or whatever and then creates a black hole and we have one right here on like what 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 would what would happen what would <laughs> what would that mean y'all see how my mind just thinks because you know they're trying in order to figure something out you'd be sitting in a lab trying to recreate it right that's what I'm thinking. When the Carl G. Jansky Very Large Array Radio Telescope captured the mystifying burst from the exceptionally powerful neutron star named Swift J02436624, astronomers were mystified. Although jets are not unheard of with neutron stars, previous theories claimed that neutron stars with strong magnetic fields would be unable to produce a jet like the one observed with the Jansky Telescope. This means that current ideas surrounding the capabilities of neutron stars need to be reconsidered and reworked. As any good scientist would do, the team made sure to closely monitor the after-effects of the star following the jet burst to begin to collect new information and data that might shed some light upon how this seemingly impossible phenomenon was able to occur. They carefully recorded the X-ray and radio emissions that followed the sudden jet burst to determine what might have caused the initial eruption. Currently, it seems that the neutron star has a nearby companion star that it is absorbing material from. This material, once attracted to the neutron star, condenses into a mass of orbiting flattened matter known as an accretion disk, which interacts with the strangely powerful magnetic field of the neutron star in order to spark the production of the jets at the star's poles. Although this is the current prevailing theory based on the immediate analysis of the after effects of the jet, there are other theories that could also explain why such an unexpected event occurred, including the stellar winds and shockwaves generated within the accretion disk. It is important to remember that these are simply preliminary theories that cannot yet be taken as fact. Like star now, quakes. Scientists are intensely working to study other neutron stars in the hopes that they might be able to observe jets occurring under similar circumstances to further verify one of these new hypotheses. Hmm. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. I don't know, man. It makes me nervous. The information and everything is great, but like I said, just like with the dinosaurs, man, them trying to recreate it from DNA and do the, everything that they saw on Jurassic Park, what makes us think they're not trying to recreate a star and the energy that it possesses? You know what I mean? Better to understand it, see how we could utilize it, what benefits we could get from it. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's fascinating, but we all know, bro. When them when they when them scientists be in them labs and their minds are going and they trying things, it it might not end well for us. That's all I'm saying. But interesting information nonetheless. You know what I mean? Especially the way black holes appear. You imagine one appearing here and they just don't know what to do with it. <laughs> Listen, man. Y'all get at me in the comment section, man, and let me know what y'all think. Y'all already see how my brain operates. All right, leave a like, share the video, and subscribe, and stick around and stay tuned to the next one. We're gone. Peace.